Level zero. You feel it before you see it. That soft tickle on your arm. Eight legs, tiny body. Instinct kicks in. Swat, flinch, maybe scream. Because the silhouette says spider and your brain says danger. But the truth? There's no danger here. This is a cellar spider or a jumping spider or maybe a harvestman, which technically isn't a spider at all. They're everywhere. In your walls, your garden, your attic corners. But they're not your enemy. Of the more than 50,000 known spider species, the overwhelming majority are harmless to humans. Some lack venom altogether. Others have venom so weak it couldn't hurt anything larger than a fruit fly. And most of them? They couldn't pierce your skin even if they tried. These spiders are insect assassins. Quiet pest control with eight legs. They feast on mosquitoes, moths, and roaches. They keep your ecosystem in balance. But they don't want to bite you. And they rarely can. This is level zero. Fear in your mind, not your bloodstream. Harmless crawlers. Venomous in classification, maybe. But not in consequence. Level one. You're in the garden. Something brushes your wrist. A quick flick, a sharp pinch. You look down and see two little marks. It stings, then it itches, swells maybe, reddens. But that's it. This is level one, the realm of the minor biters. Spiders like the huntsman, the wolf spider, or the sack spider. These aren't killers, but they are armed. Their venom is mildly cytotoxic, enough to subdue prey, but barely strong enough to register in human tissue. For some, the bite feels like a bee sting. For others, it goes unnoticed. What you might blame on an allergic reaction, or a mosquito, could just as easily be a harmless spider asserting its boundaries. And despite the myths, these bites rarely lead to necrosis or long-term damage. Most clear up on their own within a few days. But the legend grows louder than the biology. Someone hears wolf spider and imagines fangs the size of nails. But this isn't a predator of people, just an ambush hunter of insects. Level one is still safe ground. Venomous, yes. But dangerous, no level two. This time, it's not a flick or an itch. It's a sharp, deliberate bite. The pain is immediate, localized, burning. Redness blooms like a bruise. The area swells, throbs, and begins to radiate heat. Hours pass. The discomfort lingers, maybe worsens. You don't feel sick, but you don't feel fine either. You've crossed into level two, the medically significant, but not lethal. This is where spiders like the false widow and the yellow sack spider live, species with potent enough venom to cause noticeable symptoms, especially in children, the elderly, or people with compromised immune systems. The false widow, often mistaken for its infamous cousin, is found across Europe, Australia, and now parts of North America. Its venom is neurotoxic, capable of triggering pain, nausea, fatigue, and muscle cramps in moderate cases. The yellow sack spider produces cytotoxins that can lead to small blisters or lesions, even ulcerations in rare instances. It's blamed for necrosis, but studies suggest those cases are rare and usually complicated by secondary infection or misdiagnosis. Still, the bite hurts. It can keep you awake, send you to the doctor, even make you miss work. But it doesn't kill. It incapacitates, not devastates. This level introduces venom you can feel. And remember, even non-lethal spider bites can mimic serious infections. Always monitor worsening symptoms. Level 3. Now it's not just discomfort, it's your whole body reacting. The bite is sharp, but it's what happens afterward that sets this level apart. You feel it in your legs, your back, your chest. Cramping muscles, sweating skin, your breathing quickens, your pulse races. This is latrodectism, the syndrome caused by widow spiders, especially the infamous black widow and redback. The venom here is alpha-latrotoxin, a compound that hijacks your nervous system. It forces neurons to fire uncontrollably, flooding your body with pain signals, muscle contractions, and stress hormones. What begins as a pinprick grows into waves of spasms, nausea, and in some cases, full-body tremors. Victims have reported feeling like they were having a heart attack. Others experience abdominal rigidity so severe, doctors confuse it for appendicitis. And yet, most survive. Thanks to anti-venom, supportive care, and modern medicine, deaths from widow spider bites are rare. But untreated, this venom can put you in the ICU and keep you there.
the elderly, the very young, and the immunocompromised are most at risk. In their bodies, the venom acts faster and harder. Still, even in healthy adults, the symptoms can last days. And the pain? Weeks. This is where spiders stop being creepy and start being clinical. Black widow bites are rarely fatal, but their symptoms can mimic a heart attack. Always seek treatment. Level 4. The bite is barely visible. You don't even notice it at first. Just a small red bump. Nothing to worry about. You ignore it. But six hours later, the skin around it starts to die. It turns purple, then black. Blisters rise. The flesh collapses. It isn't an infection. It's necrosis. This is the brown recluse. And this is level 4. Their venom contains sphingomyelinase D, an enzyme that destroys cell membranes and triggers a local immune overreaction. The body tries to fight the venom and ends up killing its own tissue. Not all recluse bites go necrotic. In fact, most heal cleanly. But the ones that don't, they become open ulcers, sometimes as wide as a silver dollar, sometimes deep enough to expose fat and muscle. These wounds can take weeks to heal. Some require debridement, the surgical removal of dead flesh. Others demand skin grafts, and in rare cases, amputation. The worst part? The bite often doesn't hurt at first. By the time you realize what's happening, it's already spreading. The recluse isn't aggressive. It hides, folds itself into dark closets, shoes, and cardboard boxes. But when it's pressed, it defends with chemical precision. And if you live in the southern U.S., especially places like Missouri, Kansas, or Oklahoma, they might be living with you. Not all recluse bites cause necrosis, but when they do, delay in treatment can mean permanent scarring. Level 5. You've been bitten. At first, it feels manageable. A sharp sting. A red mark. Maybe some swelling. You expect it to be painful, but not life-threatening. Then the symptoms start to spread. Not just through your skin, but through your entire body. You grow cold, clammy, dizzy. Your heart beats too fast, then too slow. Your vision fades at the edges. Your lips lose their color. You can't quite catch your breath. This isn't just a surface wound. This is an internal breakdown. You've entered level 5, where spider venom begins to act like a systemic poison, unraveling the body from the inside out. The Chilean recluse is one of the only spiders known to do this. Its venom carries the same tissue-destroying enzyme as its North American cousin, sphingomyelinase D, but in higher potency and sometimes in much higher volume. The effect isn't always immediate, but when it escalates, it doesn't stop. The venom begins by breaking down red blood cells. This causes a dangerous condition called hemolytic anemia, where your body can't deliver oxygen properly. Your skin may look bruised, your urine may turn dark, your kidneys, already overworked, start to fail. You may stop urinating altogether. Your blood pressure drops. You grow weaker by the hour. In some cases, the immune system overreacts. It begins attacking your own tissue. What started as a small spider bite is now a multi-organ crisis. If you don't get blood transfusions, you may lose consciousness. If you wait too long, you may never wake up. And the cruel twist? The spider is tiny, reclusive. It doesn't want to bite you. It hides in quiet places, dark drawers, attic corners, under folded clothes. But when disturbed, it strikes and walks away, leaving behind a chemical time bomb. It's not a guaranteed death sentence. But if it escalates and you're hours from a hospital, you're not just in danger, you're already dying. Chilean recluse venom is among the most dangerous in the world and can be fatal without early intervention. Level 6. You're no longer dealing with reclusive hunters. Now the spider sees you, and it doesn't back down. This is level 6, where danger isn't just in the venom, it's in the behavior, the aggression, the unpredictability. You're staring down the Brazilian wandering spider. It's fast, it's defensive, and it's armed with venom so potent, it's considered the most dangerous spider in the world. This spider doesn't sit in webs. It prowls. It walks the forest floor, hides in shoes, bananas, bedsheets. Its fangs are strong, its body large. And when it's disturbed, it rears up, exposes its fangs, and charges. Its venom, known as PHTX3, acts like a neurotoxin and vascular disruptor. It can cause sharp, burning pain at the bite site. 
But that's only the beginning. Within minutes, you may feel tightness in the chest, salivation increases, your vision blurs, your breathing becomes shallow. In men, it causes a bizarre symptom, priapism or long-lasting painful erections due to vascular misfiring. In severe cases, victims experience full respiratory paralysis. The diaphragm, your breathing muscle, shuts down. You don't just suffocate, you stay conscious long enough to feel it happening. Fatalities have occurred, particularly in children and the elderly, but it's not alone in this tier. The six-eyed sand spider, native to the deserts of southern Africa, hides in the sand, perfectly camouflaged. It doesn't seek out human contact, but its venom is among the most destructive ever studied. Necrotic, hemolytic, and so powerful it has killed test animals in minutes. Thankfully, bites to humans are extremely rare, but if one struck deep enough, there's no known antivenom and almost no chance of survival. Brazilian wandering spider venom is being researched as a treatment for erectile dysfunction. Nature's irony in action. Level 7. This isn't about slow necrosis or days of illness. This is about speed. Velocity. The countdown begins the second the fangs pierce your skin. You've just been bitten by the Sydney funnel web spider and you're running out of time. This spider is one of the deadliest arachnids on Earth, not because of aggression, though it is bold, but because its venom acts fast and targets the human nervous system with surgical precision. What makes it more terrifying is this. Its venom is especially toxic to primates. Dogs, not as much. Other animals often survive. But humans, we are its biological Achilles heel. Its venom contains delta atracotoxin, a neurotoxin that forces your nerve cells to stay open, flooding your body with electrical chaos. Your muscles convulse, sweat pours from your body, your blood pressure skyrockets, and then your lungs begin to fail, fluid builds up, you drown from the inside. In the worst cases, children have died in under 30 minutes, adults have succumbed in less than an hour. It's not science fiction, it's documented. Fortunately, Australia developed an anti-venom in the 1980s. Since its introduction, there have been no recorded deaths from a funnel web bite. But that's because of luck, awareness, and preparedness. Without treatment, this spider doesn't leave room for second chances. Also in this level is the mouse spider, a close relative to the funnel web, with similar venom composition and equally serious consequences, though human bites are less frequent and generally less severe. Level 7 is where spiders stop being symbolic. They don't just haunt your dreams, they now appear in your emergency room records. The Sydney funnel web has one of the deadliest venoms on Earth, but zero deaths since antivenom was introduced. Level 8. We leave the forest behind. Now we're inside a laboratory. A clear container, a digital interface, a spider, but not one nature designed. This is level 8, the beginning of synthetic venom. What if a spider's genome was restructured, not by evolution, but by engineers? Using CRISPR, scientists already understand how venom genes function. They can isolate them, amplify them. In theory, they could modify a spider to produce stronger venom, in higher doses, delivered more quickly, or in ways our current treatments can't stop. Imagine a recluse spider modified to cause full-body necrosis, a synthetic widow whose venom targets heart tissue directly, a spider with silk as strong as Kevlar, and venom that paralyzes instantly. These aren't just ideas. They're being explored in biochemical labs today, though with peaceful intentions, cancer treatment, biodegradable materials, and precision neurology. But flip the intent, and you flip the threat. A weaponized spider is no longer a myth. It's a prototype. Level 9. You turn on the light. Something scurries. Then another. Then a dozen. What you're seeing isn't natural, it's designed. This is level 9, where spiders don't just attack, they multiply. Imagine a colony of engineered spiders, hyper-aggressive, venom-optimized, bred to recognize human body heat. They travel fast, climb walls, nest in dark places, and bite not once, but over and over. Each bite contains venom that's synthetic, unpredictable, and untreatable. Now imagine them being released. In an airport, in a hospital, in a grocery store. Thousands of tiny arachnids with one function disable everything they touch. You can't trap them. You can't spray them. They breed fast. 
die Slowakischen, and they don't stop. It's a weapon that thinks like a swarm, and the target? Infrastructure, people, nations. Level 10. No spiders, no nests, no webs, just symptoms. Cramping, twitching, breathing failure, cardiac shutdown, death within hours. You don't know what bit you, because nothing did. This is level 10, where venom is no longer a delivery system, it's the threat itself. Imagine a lab-designed neurotoxin, inspired by spider venom but spread like a virus. Not through bites, but through air, water, contact. It spreads silently, mutates quickly, avoids detection. Hospitals report mass seizures. Entire towns lose power as medical systems collapse. Survivors can't breathe. Anti-venoms fail. New versions of the toxin emerge every week. It's not alive. It doesn't crawl. It doesn't wait in a corner. But it learns. It spreads. And eventually, it replaces the air we breathe. This isn't a spider plague. It's a venom pandemic. And once it begins, there may be no way to end it. They're smaller than you, slower than you, but one drop of venom changes everything. Subscribe before the next bite. See you in the next of the Sasta.